Hey everybody, Shark Scrapper. Well, I thought we'd do something a little bit different for this Wednesday's bite. Instead of a computer, this is a Raycap box from the cell phone tower company. Let's see what we got inside here. Ooh. Ooh. All right, well, so it turns out I have done something similar to what we've got going here. I know, it's kind of boring, right? This is a plastic body. You've got an aluminum sheet here, and then you've got these connectors, and then you've got these ray caps. Uh, these are cast aluminum that have been hogged out, threaded, and then there's ferrous threads that go in here that clamp down on cable. And you can see an example of, of this right here. So here's the cable, and it's clamped down on the copper uh, so that this is all charged. Now you can imagine the size of the cables that were coming in here from these openings, and these are all the cables that have been showing up on my doorstep. But let's look at what's inside of these. So I just happened to have one that I that I took from another unit. I tell you what, let's finish getting the box emptied out and then we'll look at the surge suppressors. The screws that are holding down this plate, this board. I also took out this connector. This is an aluminum frame. A little Velcro wire strap there. Now what? Ah, there we are. There's a screw over there. All right, so there's a nice aluminum frame. And that's Ferris. So those guys have to come off. That's probably going to be a pretty easy thing to do, I'm guessing. Not quite as easy as I had thought it would be. I thought that would just pop right out of there. But it's easy enough. And it's fun. There we go. And those little guys won't make any difference. All right, so there's some sheet aluminum. My screwdriver ran away from me. Where did it go? So I had to take the broom and sweep underneath the workbench to get the screwdriver out. Found a whole bunch of stuff down there. We'll go through that. Because you know there's going to be some good stuff hiding down there. All right, so these guys uh, are ferrous. Are you stainless? You are. Oop. So that one's stainless. The rest of this stuff is ferrous. Let's just get you. You might be stainless. Nope, you're ferrous. <clears throat> All right, now. There's some little brass screw threads in these plastic pockets. I'm not gonna mess with those. That's just too much work. All right, now, these are usually aluminum in the ore. So we'll get these off of here. Well, you know, I just need to get a my big wrench, get that off of there. That's easy enough to do. All right. And these were retaining straps to keep these cap uh, uh, lightning energy preventers, lightning, 
what are they called? They're called strike zorb shark. Strike zorb. You know, like lightning strike absorbing kind of, you know. Anyway. That's what absorbed the energy when the lightning bolts would hit. Or some of it anyway. Okay, now. Yep, that's a nut. Because sometimes you feel like a nut. Oh, I gotta stop doing that. All right, I don't think you all wanna sit around and watch me unscrew a bunch of things, but there is something that's really kind of cool about this board, so I wanna jump right to that here before we get to the strike swords. Well, now here's an interesting question. What do you think? You think that's silver? Aluminum? I don't know. I don't know. And then I don't have silver test solution here, so. Okay, I can't help myself. I have to look at this board and think through this. Now we know that the strike sorbs were each mounted here. And the junction boxes were mounted on the larger silverish looking pads here. Now, if you look carefully at the masking on this board, you can see that each one of the strike sorbs had a leg that was on the far left side, and that was going to these ground connectors. Right there, you can see the ground symbol. So it kind of seems to me that the cables were going into two sides of the strike sorbs, and then there was a ground out, and that's what was helping to uh, you know, that circuit flow that's necessary to dissipate the uh, energy or the spike from a uh, lightning hit. Um, this will come off because that'll be aluminum. And taking out each one of these tiny little screws is no big deal. I mean, you know, you just take a flathead and screw it and take them out. It's just time consuming and annoying. So I'm not going to make you sit through that either. Let's just get right to these strike sword things. They're cool. So here's one of those ray caps. And when we separate it, we've got the plastic shell. And then this is the um, device inside. Now this is called a strike sword. And here you can see the rating for it. What, this, what these boxes are, are the uh, electrical arresters or uh, lightning arresters uh, absorbers that are in the cell phone towers. Now you can imagine cell phone towers get hit frequently by lightning. So this is what helps to protect the sensitive electronics that are inside of there. All right, so when we take off the plastic, that plastic cap, we see there's a retaining ring in there. So, let's get our... Retaining ring pliers. And so the strike sorb uses a metal oxide varistor that's packed under pressure and in a uh, environmentally protected compartment. That's why you've got the retaining rings and you'll see springs in there, um, pressure bands in there. Uh, so a metal oxide varistor is also known as a voltage dependent resistor. Now that's kind of cool when you think about it because as the voltage goes up, it does its job better, which is, you know, what we see here. And when I shake this thing out, what you're going to see is a ceramic disc. That ceramic disc is actually the metal oxide. There you go. See the little ceramic disc there? That's the metal oxide. That's the actual varistor component. Uh, and that's usually something like a zinc um, oxide, 90% zinc oxide in a ceramic uh, structure. And that's what allows it to uh, be a varistor. So it's really interesting. I'm not going to go into a lot of details on what varistors are and how they work and all that. A lot more information than what we would normally share here. But if you're really into that stuff, I encourage you to look it up because it really is kind of fascinating the way they work. 
<clears throat> you are another plastic ring and there's a bunch of pressure rings here and you're all aluminum and an o-ring inside there now keep in mind these aren't the only thing that's doing the lightning protection. They have massive grounding cables and other things that dissipate the high energy lightning strike. This is part of what's just preventing energy that might get into some of the more sensitive stuff uh, that might get through the various grounding uh, straps and connections and cables and stuff like that. So even though it looked like it was a pretty boring scrap, there was some really interesting stuff here. In addition to the strike sorb components, We've got this really cool board that we were looking at. I mean, hey, it's just a low-grade board, but, you know, that's kind of cool the way it works. We've got all these chunks of aluminum. Uh, so, you know, this turned out to be a very interesting scrap. What part did you find to be the most interesting? Hey, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That's the little link in the middle of the other links that are taking you to more e-waste scrapping videos. Have a great day, everybody.